Hey guys, what's up? Today we're back working on the Silverado here. We're gonna start, um, we got both of our frame side brackets made in our last video working on the Silverado. So today we're gonna mount them up onto the frame and then um, you know clamp them on and use the floor jack to push them against the frame for good pressure. And then we're gonna mark their holes to be able to drill out their through bolt holes. Get those drilled, get them mounted, you know, we're not going to probably use every nut and bolt to mount them on, you know, just enough to mock them up because that will do the every nut and bolt when they're back in powder. Um, and then we'll move on to the link arms or the long, the long arms. We got the driver side ones made, but we still have to make the rear ones. We just got our order from Shahela Steel yesterday to complete the passenger side long arms. So we're going to go ahead and bring those in and cut those up and get those to length. And then from there, we should be able to have the axle placed where it's going to go. And then we'll move on to the frame truss and the, or sorry, the axle truss and the frame bridge from there in the next episode. So without a further ado, guys, let's get started. I'll find some cardboard or something. Contrary to popular belief, any batteries on concrete doesn't drain them. What? What's the theory behind the cement? What do people say is why? Cement and lead. Lead and cement cause like a, uh, since the cement's so cold, it cools the lead and pulls the acid out of it. It doesn't. Yeah, that one, uh, that doesn't. You can leave back. Now that we got our passenger side long arms cut out, or cut off that long 20 foot piece of 2 inch by 250 wall dump, James is down here figuring out how he wants to set up the, uh, well not set up, but he's got the frame side bracket on, he's marking out his holes and getting ready to get those all marked so we can drill them. And then the dilemmas that come with drilling with it tucked up in there like that. It's hard to show you guys the lift arm in the way now. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and um, do that.
Hey guys, this morning James and I are headed up to Tacoma Screw and to the Napa by the Auto Mall. We need to pick up a set of high lift jack stands so we can put the front of the Chevy on them so we can lower the lift arms out of the way and then go ahead and be able to mount our frame side Cougar House Fab four link brackets for the long arms. So um, also we need a long drill bit too so we can drill the through bolt holes for those brackets because the uh, the drill head just wants to hit the top of the the, the, the the top of the drill which just wants to hit the pinch well so because of that it does acts weird so you know you can't drill a straight hole and we all know what happens when you try to draw a hole and it's oblong right or it'll make an oblong hole and that's just not right it's not the right way to do it so we're gonna go up there and get this 12 inch long 5 8 drill bit so we can have the room to be able to drill those holes so we're gonna go to Olympia, pick up those jack stands, pick up that drill bit, and we're gonna bring you guys along with us. So, let's do it. Hey guys, back at the shop. James and I kind of ran errands yesterday getting all the things we needed to work on the Silverado here. We got that really big tap. $180 tap. So we when we put the big ballistic joints in the link arms or the long arms we're able to, you know, after we weld them, we got to be able to ream them when we're all done. You know, these big guys here. You know, after we do this big weld, we got to be able to run that tap in there, clean it out because they shrink at the thousands of an inch level. You know what I mean? Not if you weld them. So, James is down here. He's got these brackets. Down. Now he's going to move on to welding up the slugs in the link arms and then uh, we're going to weld the end pieces on to the long arms that go on to the Ford Super Duty axles. So let's continue the work. James and I got the four link long arms mocked up. We got the frame side four link bracket in the frame bolted down. So now we're gonna move on to steering. We gotta make the steering rod down here that will connect, you know, passenger knuckle, driver knuckle. And it's gotta have a little, a slight bend on either side. So James and I are gonna go ahead and, oh yeah, and this knuckle over here. Let me see if I'm zooming in. We gotta drill out the tie rod end hole for this larger 7 8 size of that tie rod end hole. So they match. So James is gonna measure out his dome here and he's gonna chop that a little bit shorter. It's a full 20 foot stick. And then he's gonna do some beard scratching and some geometry and figure out how many degrees of, of bend he wants on either side so it'll clear as it steers and stuff. And then we're gonna go ahead and Probably just get it prepped so we, so we can bend it up on Monday, but we'll, we'll get it prepped and ready. So let, let's continue.
morning guys. Back working on the Silverado this morning. We've been bending up the steering rod that will connect the, you know, the driver's side and passenger knuckle together. We got that cut, bent, our pieces put in the end. Now we need to get a drill bit so we can drill this knuckle here. Let's see if I can zoom in to seven eighths and then the passenger one to seven eighths. Seven eighths is the size of these time joints, and seven eighths is one size bigger than the shank for the tie rod ends. So we're gonna go ahead and get this set up here, and then I need to go pick up a seven eighths drill bit from Tacoma Screw, and I also need to get another tap for the Himes for this size here, left hand and a right hand tap, you know, for each side. But yeah, so we're, we're going to just uh, continue working here on this, probably move on new. After this, we'll start designing up some, co some coilover mounts until the high steer arm comes from Weaver Fabrication. With the knuckles, we can put it on that side and then we can design up the axle bridge then because then we will know the height of our pan hard bar mount for the axle side. But until then, we can go ahead and design up our, coil our coilover mounts. So let's keep working. James and I are getting, getting set up here. We got to move the axle back on the passenger side a little bit so it's perfect with our geometry. And then uh, James is going to go ahead and tack the lower side brackets to the dome tubing. There's more pieces going to go on there. It's not just those. There's, there's going to be four more parts that connect in there and strengthen that all up. But then he'll go ahead and tack that together. Then he can pull out his long arms and weld those together. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Alright guys, so now we got our steering rod made, you know, we have to shorten one side, I think an inch, um, but now we got to go ahead and pull off one of these tires at a time. You know, I went and got that big 7 8 drill bit so we can drill this out for heim joints, this knuckle here. So James is going to pull this tire off now and we're going to go ahead and uh, start drilling these out. Hey guys, I'm kind of finishing up the extra of this video a little bit different than I normally do. Okay, so we made up our steering rod, right? Go side to side. This side's obviously a little bit longer. So shorten that up a little bit. Put that in there, weld it in. Weld the slug in. Got our 7 8 bolts. But then we went to drill these knuckles and uh, the drill bit just wants to grab on the hole. So, you know, we're doing this like a few other people build, build these lifts, but they're not going to tell us what to do, of course, right? So we got to figure it out ourselves. Well, those knuckles have to be come out, they have to come out, be put in a mill at, at a machine shop and have them drill them out to 7 eighths. You can't do that with a regular drill bit. And then 
um, the axle here, we got these extra pieces made, you guys can see them. There'll be a, a, a top plate too, but I'll cut those out and weld those on. You can tell what's going to get folded in. I'll be welded up super strong. But the axle still needs to be moved over an inch to this way, but the lift arm is in the way. Look. So that's why we didn't tug it over and start the coilover mounts today because we got, we got to tug it over and do that. So we need to at least make up our steering rod so we can connect the two knuckles so every time we go to move the axle around, one doesn't turn separate from the other one. Um, so yeah, we got to support the front of the truck with some high lift, heavy duty jack stands and or make some wooden ones like I did for my foreigner and put the 12 tons on those, support the front of the truck so we can move the lift arms out. Then we can tug the axle over, then the link arms will be exactly how James needs them, and then he can take those out, fully weld them up, and we can put them back on the truck, and then those aren't going to move. And then um, we'll be able to have the steering rod done, and then we'll move on to coilovers, and then once the knuckle shows up from Weaver Fabrication with, with the high steer on it, and the high steer, because they custom machined the, the knuckle off the passenger side of my foreigner, and then I'm going to put that on this one and then put that one over there until I do it for my foreigner's lift kit. Um, so yeah, we're, we're in pretty good standings. We just got to, the knuckles got to be machined now. So we're going to call machinists in the morning about that. Um, and then in the meantime, James is going to see about coming up with maybe stacking up some more wood like I did with my foreigner. We'll two, take two six ton jack stands I have and put them underneath the GX, take the two 12 tons out, bring them in here because they're much bigger and taller put those on some wood, support the front of the truck, move the lift arms, and then we can center up the axle, weld together the arms, and then by that time, the steering box will be back from PSC, from the rebuild, it should be here tomorrow, today's Monday. It's been three days of filming. So that'll be here Tuesday or Wednesday, hopefully tomorrow, Tuesday. Bolt that on, and then we'll be able to figure out, once the weaver steering arm shows up, we can throw it on. We're going to have to drill its knuckle out too. Throw it on and then we'll know the angle of up our pan hard bar and stuff because that has to be the same angle as, as your steering box to tie rod in. It's got to match that angle. So until then guys, please thank you for liking and subscribing everyone. Thank you guys so much for your constant support as always and thank you guys so much to the new subscribers. I mean, I can't believe how many subscribers we're getting each week, guys. It's just awesome. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys coming to the channel and joining the crazy builds. So if you guys like Cougar House Garage, you like what we do, check us out at cougarhousegarage.com. Check us out at Facebook forward slash Cougar House Garage. And we are Cougar House Garage on Instagram, bros. Follow us there to keep up with all the crazy projects. And we'll see you tomorrow.